In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most important bookkeeping conventions for organic chemistry, and these are curved arrows for resonance. So we're going to show how to convert resonance forms using curved arrows. And the most important rule that we'll talk about as we go through this video is definitely <laughs> thou shalt not break the octet rule. So do not break the octet rule. No matter, unless you're talking about an atom, which is a, which is in the row below CNOF. So for CNOF. Um, so this is very important when drawing curved arrows. We want to make sure that we never break the octet rule. We never want to have more than eight electrons around it. Okay. And the second important thing to think about when we're talking about resonance forms is that we're only going to be breaking and forming pi bonds. So double bonds, in other words. We're not going to be forming or breaking single bonds here. So no single bonds. We're just changing the number of double bonds around around mall. We're just moving what we call pi electrons around. And so curved arrows are the tool, really, we, sh we use to show this. We use to show movement of electrons. And the good news is that there's really only three moves. There's really only three moves you can do with curved arrows to learn. And we're going to go through each of those three moves with curved arrows in this video. So if you learn these three moves, then you will at least show how to how to move curved how to move electrons around in resonance forms. And of course, that is a key skill when talking about organic chemistry. So let's look at move number one. Okay, move number one is we're going to show how to move a lone pair to a pi bond. So. I'm going to show my resonance form on the left hand side and my resonance form on the right hand side. These are resonance forms of each other. These are different ways of arranging the pi electrons in each of these molecules. And this one's got two charges on it, this one's neutral. And what we can do is we can take an arrow. So the arrow is going to come from this lone pair on the oxygen, and the tail is on the lone pair, and the, the head is going to be between the carbon and the oxygen. So What's going to happen here is if you look at the charges, we're going to go from oxygen, which is starts off being negative one. Now look what happens to the charge. It goes from being negative one to being neutral. So we can draw we can draw this red dot, red line in here to show this pair of electrons which has moved down. So oxygen has gone from a charge of uh, let's see so actually move some things around here. So oxygen has gone from negative 1 to 0. And carbon, it only had 6 electrons around it before. It had a positive charge. It's going from positive 1 now to 0. So the curved arrows, they show not only the f forming and breaking of bonds, but also changes in formal charge. And if you note your tail, our tail became more positive by one, and where the head is, the atom becomes more negative by one. So from, from uh, positive to, to neutral. Okay, so that's the first example. So lone pair to pi bond, we can do this uh, this is one of the legal moves. Notice we didn't break the octet rule here. Everything's good. All right, so let's look at the second move. And that's actually exactly the opposite of the first move, okay? So we're going to take a pi bond and we're going to move it to become a lone pair. So if you look at these two resonance forms, we've got one on the left, which is our neutral ketone. And we've seen this before. It's got the negative charge on oxygen, the positive charge on carbon. So we're going to take this double bond between carbon and oxygen and we're going to move it from carbon and oxygen to now it's going to become a new lone pair 
on our oxygen. And if you again look at the charges, the charge on oxygen was started off neutral and then it became negative. So it became negative one. And charge on carbon started off neutral. And then it, because it was sharing this pair of electrons with the oxygen, so it had one of those electrons kind of counted as its own. But now these two electrons are owned by the oxygen. So it's gone from sharing to lacking. So it's gone from zero to a charge of plus one. So note that the, the net charge is still zero. So if you add minus one and plus one, it's still zero. But the formal charges on the individual atoms are different. So it's the second move we can do. We can move, we can break a pi bond and form a new lone pair on an atom. Okay. So again, just uh, let's see. And then the third one, the third move we can do, if we compare these two resonance forms, and this is a slightly different uh, resonance form that we were looking at than the previous two times, but this molecule on the left, uh, we see we've got a, let's number the carbons here, one, two, and three, one, two, and three. Here we've got a pi bond between one and two, and we've got a positive charge or a carbocation on carbon three. And here we've got a carbocation on carbon one and a pi bond between carbon two and carbon three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show the forming and breaking of this bond here. So we're going to We, we formed, we're gonna form C2 to C3, and we're gonna break C1 to C2. So we're gonna show that with the tail between carbon one and carbon two, and it's gonna form a new bond between carbon two and carbon three. So we can draw this new arrow in here, like so. So this shows the breaking of C1 to C2 and the forming of C2 to C3. And if you look at the charges here, carbon, carbon one it started off neutral, so it had a charge of zero, and then it becomes plus one. So it starts off with a charge of zero because it's sharing this pair of electrons with carbon two. And then carbon two, actually this pair of electrons is now being shared between carbon two and carbon three, so it goes from sharing to lacking. And carbon two, notice carbon two has four in, in four bonds in the starting material and four bonds in the product. So it starts off neutral and it goes to becoming neutral again. And then carbon three goes from a charge of plus one uh, right here because it has only six electrons around it when it forms a new bond with carbon two, now it goes from lacking to sharing a pair of electrons with carbon two. So it's actually going to gain an electron and that's gonna make it more negative. So if you add plus one, minus one, it gives you zero, right? So that's gonna be neutral. So overall, the net charge has not changed, but we've broken this pi bond between one and two, and we formed a pi bond between two and three. And every single resonance isomer you can draw, every single resonance form you can draw, will be a combination of these three moves that, that we've talked about. So lone pair to pi bond, pi bond to lone pair, and pi bond to pi bond. And like I said, they show breaking and forming of bonds, and also they show you where the charges go. And keeping track of where the bonds form, where the bonds break, and where the charges go is one of the key things when you're looking at reactions and keeping track of where the electrons are flowing. Because remember that electrons are kind of like the currency of chemistry, and what our curved arrow system is the accounting system we've developed to keep track of how these electrons move.